book review on video, this time Skygge by the Swedish author Karin Alftegen. Uh, Alftegen has written five books, all sort of uh, crime, thriller kind of things, mysteries. Uh, and uh, without actually meaning to, she has uh, created a series. Uh, all of her books in the original have one word titles starting with S, uh, which in English are just they had to give up uh, the S thing, they've just translated each word uh, directly uh, into English. So it's uh, Guilt, Longing, Betrayal, Shame and Shadow. Uh, this is her most recent novel, Shadow, uh, published I think in 2007, possibly 2008 in Swedish, uh, 2008 in uh, Norwegian, and I think last year uh, in English as Shadow. Uh, this is the audio edition that I've read. Uh, read by the actor Morten Andresen, and I have to say I cannot recommend this edition, unfortunately, because he didn't do a good job reading it. And that's strange because I'm pretty sure that I've uh, read another book read by him previously and enjoyed it a lot. So I was expecting this to be good as well, but I can't honestly say that it was. He just read it in this dramatic voice, constantly. And he just overdid it so completely because he really made such an effort to make everything sound so dramatic. So that every single little scene, no matter how mundane, even down to a character pouring himself a cup of coffee, became infused with the greatest possible sense of drama. I mean, do you know what I mean? That's just too much. Yes, this is a book where a lot of stuff happens and some dramatic scenes and but there's a lot of mundane stuff too they drink coffee and they check their email i mean he just totally overdid it and i didn't like listening to this book unfortunately because it's a good book in and of itself but out of the four of her novels that i've read i enjoyed this the least unfortunately just because of the reader uh, and also because of the plot in the book because personally to my taste it just got to be too much. Um, this is about a family who, to the outside world, is a, fa a fantastic family. They have everything and people look up to them, but they have a lot of secrets that they're unfortunately having to guard zealously, uh, unless basically everything they work for is just going to come tumbling down. And that's okay, it makes for an interesting story, but she just piled it on, I thought. It just got to be too much, so... I wouldn't recommend, if you're going to read her, that you start with this book because it's, it is a bit, not just because of the reader, but in itself, it is a bit on the dramatic side, for my taste. Uh, the story, uh, it's set in Sweden, in Stockholm, where um, the main character is the son of a great author, a Nobel laureate, who is now uh, completely handicapped by an incapacitating and debilitating stroke. He just can't do anything, he can move like one finger. Uh, but the son, who is now middle-aged and himself doesn't write himself, doesn't produce anything, he's just basically a lazy bum. He um, has made his career uh, lecturing on his father's work and also running a foundation, uh, which um, a philanthropic foundation which sort of puts into practice uh, what his father supposedly try to teach in his novels. Uh, you know, they drill for wells in developing countries and help educate third world children and just a lot of really good things. Um, and this man, the son, he's very respected, um, basically all over, partly as the son of this uh, Rangnerfeldt, but also as through his own efforts. Uh, but at home, it's a different story. He's uh, in a bad marriage, uh, both of the parents just stay there for the daughter, she's 12, uh, and doesn't have a very good relationship with her father. He's a total cheating bastard. Uh, he just chases anything in a skirt, he drinks too much and is always telling himself that he has to stop, but he's gonna stop, but then the next day, oh, just this one was, you know. Uh, and um, he feels that he's not worthy of uh, his father's great legacy. Uh, and the sort of key event that triggers the uh, plot in the book is that uh, an old woman dies who has been for many years the um, the maid or 
I shouldn't say maid, I should say housekeeper, that's what she's been, for this family, the Rangnefeld family, when the main character was uh, a boy, she was their housekeeper. Um, she retired and she lived for another 25 years and now she's died. And she has a world, everything she owns, which is more than you'd think because she owned a full set of uh, Rangnefeld's novels, signed and totally mint first editions. And everything she owns, all her money, all her possessions, everything, uh, she will to a young man whom she had never ever met, who never knew of her existence. Uh, and he is quite a sad person. He um, He's an orphan. He was abandoned as a child. Uh, grew up with foster parents, but... You know, never really knew who he was and has always sort of struggled to find his place in the world. And when he gets this inheritance, he's shocked. Why would some old woman who he never met and who's way too old to be his birth mother uh, why would she give him all this stuff? And he can't stop digging into this. He has to find out. Because obviously, she must have known something. She knows his name, she knows his address, she knows everything. And he's never heard of her. So, what is this? Uh, he has to find out. And of course, his story is connected with the story of the Ragnarfeld family. Uh, connected much more intimately than you would ever imagine. Uh, the family has a lot of secrets. Dramatic secrets, tragic secrets, um, and they all start to come to the surface. While in the background, uh, the main character's wife is struggling with her loveless marriage and the thought of what her leaving it would do to her child. Um, the main character, of course, he's struggling too with his not alcoholism, but drinking too much, and with his infidelity, you know, he wants to have a good life. And also, there's the matter of his father's will, because while the son doesn't really like his wife anymore, that doesn't necessarily mean that the father-in-law agrees with him, so... Um, there are a lot of threads that she pulls together very skillfully. I mean, she is a wonderful, wonderful writer. She has a fantastic way with words. Uh, the plot is intriguing, and the characters are fantastic. I just felt that the plot became too much. She just piled it on, like, one secret on top of the other, and each one darker, and... Yeah, it just got to be too much. But it is interesting because uh, Alfstein herself, she is the great uh, niece of Astrid Lindgren, who is, of course, as beloved as sweet as you'd ever find. Um, and she wrote this novel because she started thinking about what if a person like that, someone who was beloved by all, uh, and known for their philanthropy and for being a wonderful person, actually has a lot of secrets, deep dark secrets, isn't the person that everyone thinks that they are. You know, how uh, would that scenario play out? What kind of dynamics would that basically uh, basically start start in the family? And I... There are some scenes here, because I say there's too much drama, there are some of these dramatic scenes are just fantastic. I mean, just leave you breathless. Uh, and there are some plot twists that certainly I never saw coming. Um, there are a lot of really good things about this book, uh, but, again, it's not her best. And for those of you who are thinking of reading it in Norwegian, steer clear of the audio edition, because I think you'll be disappointed. Uh, but it's uh, definitely worth reading. Uh, great characters, great writing, interesting setting. The story is told in parallel, the son in the present, and the father from, like, the from when he was young in the 30s, 40s, and up until the present day. So you hear all the background, but she pushes it out slowly. So there is uh, the setting spans uh, 80 years, 90 years, and it's really it's fascinating. So a lot of good points, but not quite up there, and certainly, for my money, not her best work.